Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Christ Luther Church and welcome to our worship service this first Sunday in Advent. I'd like to just give an introduction to the word Advent, which is Latin for arrival or coming. And it describes the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ into the flesh. The word becomes incarnate. Advent begins the church year because the church year begins where Jesus' earthly ministry begins. And the Old Testament prophesied to us of the Incarnation. After Advent comes the Nativity, or as it, as it was once called, the Christ Mass. Christmas is a celebration of the birth of Jesus. It's a celebration of his birth. Then comes the epiphany about his miracles and his ministry. Then Lent about his Calvary-bound mission. Then the resurrection, Resurrection Sunday, about his resurrection, the sending of the apostles, and then the ascension uh, 40 days after the Resurrection Sunday. And then Pentecost, which is 50 days after he ascends. And Jesus sends the Holy Spirit. So the first half of the church year, December through June, highlights the life of Christ. And the second half, June through November, highlights the teachings of Christ. And the parables and miracles play a big part there. That's the church year in a nutshell, and should help to reveal how Advent fits into the big, broad picture. So Advent specifically focuses on Christ's arrival or his coming. Christ's coming manifests itself to us in three ways, past, present, and future. The readings which highlight Christ's comings are in the past. They focus on the Old Testament prophecies of his incarnation and his birth in Bethlehem. The readings which highlight Christ's coming in the future focus on his second coming in the present and his present ministry today focuses among us by means of the Holy Spirit through word and through sacrament so as, as uh, Jim comes up and lights the first advent candle the advent wreath is a Christian tradition that began in eastern Germany uh, prior to the reformation and it symbolizes the passage of the four weeks of Advent. It's a circular candle holder. It's a circular candle holder that typically holds five candles. And during the season of Advent, one candle on the wreath is lit each Sunday until all the candles, including the fifth candle, the Christ candle, is lit on Christmas Day or Christmas Eve. Each candle represents an aspect of the spiritual preparation for the celebration of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. And most Advent uh, wreaths have three colors, purple or royal blue, pink and white. Now the first candle which Jim lit is the prophecy candle, the candle of hope. And we can hope because God is faithful and will keep his promises made to us. Our hope comes from God. And again, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse will spring up. One who will arise to rule over the nations. The Gentiles will hope in him. And in Romans 15, it says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's pray again. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time of Advent, this time of hope, which we hope as we lift up our heads and look toward the heavens, knowing that our, our redemption draws near. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for being here today, for being in worship with you and expecting from you during this worship service. God, I pray that you would be with us, especially by your Holy Spirit's presence. Guide and direct us as we hear the word spoken and we hear the word preached this morning. And as we sing in response to you, worshipful, uh, worshipful 
wonderful songs in anticipation of the birth of our Lord and also in the anticipation of your glorious return. We pray these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. All that adjustment, I forget to turn my mic on. All right, whoa. <laughs> All righty then. Overcorrection. Overcorrection. Okay, let's do this. Slider one down. Slider one down. Test, test. Okay. Thank you. Sorry about that. Well, I was doing pretty good there with that. All right. Start over. Yes. Yes, the Lord be with you. Oh, let us. Oh, I did pray. Yeah. Jerry, you messing me up there. I'm going to get you out of church. <laughs> Bad boy. All right. And especially for Jerry, let us continue our worship service with confession and absolution. In all sincerity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sins, sin we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. We confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And now Almighty God has, uh, in his mercy, given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you and forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand with me as we sing, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, my great Redeemer's praise. Please stand as you're able. Good morning. Good morning. Our Old Testament reading is from Jeremiah 33, verses 14 through 16. 
Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will dwell securely. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Our gradual today is from Psalm 25, verses 1 through 10. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exalt over me. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. They shall be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right, and he teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. The New Testament reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 9 through 13. For what thanksgiving can we return to God for you, for all the joy that we feel for your sake before our God, as we pray most earnestly night and day that we may see you face to face and supply what is lacking in your faith? Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you, and may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all as we do for you, so that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. And here ends the reading. The reading. Uh, thank you, Mark. Please stand as we ask God to open the eyes of our hearts to hear the words of his gospel. Today's gospel lesson is taken from the gospel of Luke, chapter 21, verses 25 through 36. And there will be signs in the sun and moon and stars, and on earth distress of nations and perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and of the waves, people fainting with fear, with foreboding of what is coming in the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken, and then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up, raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. And he told them a parable. 
Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they come out in leaf, you see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all has taken place. Heaven, <clears throat> heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But watch yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life. And that day come upon you suddenly like a trap. For it will come upon all who dwell on the face of the whole earth. But stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place, and to stand before the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Thank you. Please be seated. <coughs> You know, for the past few Sundays, we've been talking about uh, Jesus and the end times. And um, in Bible study, we, we spoke about, or we talked, we, we learned about the book of Revelation, and we learned about Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and how Jesus taught about the end times. And one of the main things that, that we took away was that Jesus says, watch yourself. Watch yourself. Watch out. Keep looking. Look out. Take care. Jesus here in verse 34 says, but watch yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life. What happens for some people is that when the going gets tough, they turn to something else, drugs, alcohol. This word dissipation is included with drunkenness, that you're so drunk that you're sick, that you're out of your mind, intoxicated. So the dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life, cares of this life take over and they permeate your life. They, they shadow the hope and promises of God from before your very eyes. And so you trust in the alcohol or the drugs, and you turn to them instead of turning to your hope. So I start with the end of this reading today, Watch Yourselves. And Jesus says, stay awake at all times. That doesn't mean... Don't go to sleep, but stay awake spiritually in your discernment. Keep watch with a spirit of discernment. And pray. Keep watch and pray. Remember when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he says, guys, stay awake and pray and watch. And he says, Stay awake and pray that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place. How are they to escape? Well, the only way to escape is to be with Christ. The only way is to stand, it says, before the Son of Man. So let's go back to chapter um, 21, verse 25. If you have your Bibles, please open them to Luke chapter 21, starting with verse 25. So Jesus is saying the signs of the end, the sun, moon, and stars, and nations in conflict will be perplexing to people. Perplexing. I try to build my vocabulary, so I'm, I'm looking up this word perplex, right? Well, the perplexity comes from being confused. Perplex, per, this perplexity comes from being doubtful. 
but also with being perplexed, there's some sense of uncertainty. And so Jesus paints this picture of reality soon to come where the signs of the end will be that the sun, moon, and stars, like in Matthew 24, 29, it says the sun will darken and the moon will turn into blood and the stars of heaven will fall to the earth. This will create a lot of panic. This will create a lot of confusion. This will create a lot of doubt in people. And there will be uncertainty when these things take place. <clears throat> the doubt, confusion, and uncertainty is like that great lake out there or the seas whose waters become thrashing about in many directions, whose waves are higher than the mountains, crashing with a sound like roaring thunder. I remember when I lived in Hawaii and I, I went to the North Shore where all the big waves came in and around December time frame. And, you know, these huge 20, 30, 40, 50 foot waves would crash in, a, in an area that was probably no deeper than the floor and two steps up if you were to walk out. And it would just crash onto the beach. And it almost echoed throughout the whole area. And I was thinking of the North Shore. And you know this word roaring? It says the, the roaring of the sea and the waves. You know, it's almost calming when you're, you know, in Tahiti and you're in your little bungalow next to the water and you hear the, the little waves lapping onto the shore, right? <laughs> That's nothing. Because what these seas are like, and, and what this is, this is, this is like a metaphor of the confusion and doubt and the uncertainty. And he uses the idea of waves, you know, being tossed to and fro. Have you seen the, the movies and videos of, of the canal just going bananas and, and you know, the, the, the waves just crashing in and, and covering the sidewalk, the old, the old walkway there was just tore up here recently within a few years ago because of the waves crashing and the sound of it. Well, this roaring is, is a keio in the Greek. That's where we get the word echo. So the sound of, of the moon and the sun and the stars and nations in conflict, it will be, it will be like sometimes, it, sometimes Sue says, you know, I, I can't talk with you with the, move, with the movie on or with football on or with the radio playing. You know, let's just have silence because, you know, there's just too much going in. Right? But can you imagine all of these things occurring and how confusing it will be? And the sound of the confusion will be like that of roaring waves and crashing waves onto a beach. It'll be perplexing to people, confusing with uncertainty. So the signs of the end will cause panic. People across the globe will faint in fear, expecting the worst. So what does he say here? People fainting with fear, with foreboding of what is coming on the world. They don't know what's coming on the world. Can, you know, it's really nice to stand out underneath the clear sky and watch, you know, a little meteor shower, right? Well, it's not going to be a little meteor shower, Jesus says. The stars will fall from the heaven. So this is going to be like, you know, some of these disaster movies. It's really interesting when you watch disaster movies sometimes, you know, um, how relative they could be to our day and time. Not saying that disaster movies are prophetic, but just what they illustrate sometimes. But all of these things going on will cause panic, and people will faint. Apo sucho, 
or aposuko. Apo means away, of, off, apart. Suko or psycho means the mind, mental, unconscious, or spirit. So, in other words, during this time period, people will start freaking out. That's what it means. And, th and they will suddenly feel extremely shocked, upset, confused, and panicked. That's what it's going to be like. This is Jesus' words, not mine. Okay? I'm just, I'm just explaining what he's saying here. The signs of the return of Christ are a signal for us to be ready. And I've talked about that. I've talked about that in Bible study. I've talked about that for the past few Sundays. Being ready for Christ's return. Not to be asleep spiritually, but be ready spiritually. Having oil in your lamps. The signs of the end are threefold. Wars, uprisings, riots, international conflict. Turn on CNN, turn on ABC, turn on Fox, read your paper. You're in the news every day, and they're getting worse. Look at Oregon, look at California, look at people just going into stores, just robbing them at gunpoint. Nobody can do anything. The police aren't doing anything. Natural disasters, cosmic disturbances, in other words, the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Powers, in the Greek, is not the powers of authority, but power. Power. Like the power of the moon that controls the tides. Like the power of the sun which gives us warmth. Can you imagine what happened? What would happen in the world if the sun became dark? It'd get cold, wouldn't it? And the third one is the rise of false prophets, false Christs, and people who falsely attempt to calculate when the end of times will take place. And there have been many. There, was, there were several at the, at the turn of the, of the millennium in 2000. They were proclaiming and preaching, you know, that Jesus is going to come back in 2000. No, he didn't. Okay? There was no secret rapture. Nothing like that. Okay? He didn't come back. There are false prophets out there teaching anti-Christ teachings. Anti-gospel teachings. There are false Christs. There are people out there today all over the world that saying they are he who has come again. They're saying, I'm he, I'm over here. He's over there. No, that's not Jesus. He doesn't come incognito. When these signs take place, we're told to straighten up, lift up our head. Don't be downcast at the appearance of these signs, Jesus is saying. Don't be downcast. Instead of being sad and afraid, quit cowering and be elated. Rise up. So now, in our world, a new fear has come out. Omicron. A new strain of COVID-19. Bringing fear and trepidation to the whole world. Should we care? Where would you rather be? Would you rather be here? Or would you rather be with Christ? That's a fair question. So, if I were to get sick with COVID-19 and die... For me to die is gain, but to live is Christ. Why should we fear Omicron? Why should we fear COVID-19? Because where our hearts are, there is our treasure. Amen? Where our hearts are, there is our treasure. And if our treasure isn't 
in heaven are looking toward heaven. Why do we even bother to celebrate Christ's coming as a child, as the Messiah, the, the seed of Jesse? Why? Because we believe that he is our Savior <clears throat> and he is our soon coming King. That's why we're here. That's why we celebrate. Instead of your head being down <clears throat> and sulking, lift up your head. Look up. For your redemption draws near. I love the way the King James says it, you know. Lift up your head for your redemption draweth nigh. Draweth nigh. <clears throat> you know, my throat wasn't clogged until I came back to Duluth this week. Yesterday. As soon as I came back to Duluth, I started coughing. I must be allergic to something around here. So please forgive me if I have to clear my throat again. But I didn't cough or, or anything in Alexandria. I don't know. There's some trees or something around here that, that get me. But we are to not sulk and put our heads down. You know, my wife has been studying everything about COVID-19, everything about the vaccines and all this kind of stuff. And there was a point where I had to say, I can't, I can't handle all this. I can't handle it. You know, it was almost like I wanted to put my head in the sand about it. But then Jesus said that, you know, I'm your hope. And whatever comes, let it come. Because, because you are mine, he says to me. And I say to him, I am yours. I give myself to you in life or in death, in health or in sickness. When I'm happy or when I'm sad, I give myself to you. <clears throat> your redemption draws near redemption you know what that is we talk about it all the time church redemption is the release effected by the payment of a ransom that's what redemption is <clears throat> it is the release effected by the payment of a ransom Redemption. Apolutrosis. Apolutrosis. Apo, away, apart from. Lutron, a redemption price, a ransom. So what this is, redemption is the act of setting free. The act of liberation. The act of deliverance. That is what redemption is for us. That is where we hope for. This first Sunday of Advent is our redemption. Because the Christ child will be born. The Messiah will be born. The Savior of the world will be born. Emmanuel, God with us, will be born. The Word become incarnate. So if we're redeemed, set free, liberated, delivered, what are we set free from? The bondage to sin. Being a slave to sin and darkness. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7, it tells us, Through Jesus Christ shed blood, we are forgiven. We are forgiven. Ephesians 1, 7, it says, In Him, in Jesus, we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of His grace. <laughs> Ephesians 1, 14, just a few verses down, it says, The elect are God's people who are His possession. 
In verse 13, In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance, until we acquire possession of it, to the praise of his glory. The elect are God's people. We are his possession. We are free from the bondage of sin, being a slave to sin in this darkness. Go over a couple of um, chapters to uh, the book of Colossians. In chapter 1, verses 13 and 14, it tells us that we're set free from sin. We are redeemed. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness, from the dominion of darkness, and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. We are set free from the sin nature that is within us. We are no longer slaves to sin. He has purchased us out of that slavery to become one of his sons and daughters. We are set free from the corruption of the body. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, starting with verse 53, we see how we are redeemed there, where mortality puts on immortality. If we look at verse 53, it tells us, for this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. So our body perishes. But as a Christian, if it perishes, we're going to be with Christ. Right? Do you believe that? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. And so the, this perishable body must put on the imperishable. For the believer... It is inevitable that our bodies will come like Christ's body, which will be imperishable. And the mortal body, which dies, it doesn't continue living, will put on immortality. It will never die. It won't get old. It won't get wrinkly. It won't stop functioning right. We won't get sick. We won't die. When the perishable puts on the imperishable and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your sting? <laughs> o oh, oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? That's why we can't be afraid anymore. If you truly trust Christ, for your salvation, for your immortality, for your forgiveness of sins, then you should proclaim as well that if I die, I'm going to be with Christ. And if I live, it's in Christ. And if I die, it's gain for me. And if I live, in Christ. And Paul, and Paul says the sting of death is sin. And the power of sin is in the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Emmanuel. Jesus. The incarnate one. The one in whom we have hope. And if we have no hope, like Paul says, well, if there's no resurrection, if our body is still perishable, if our body is still mortal, then why do we even worship? Why do we even come to church? Why do we even claim to be Christian? Right? We're set free from death. Physical and spiritual death. 
physical death because our bodies are perishable, because we are immortal. Our bodies are immortal. We have to put on immortality. And spiritual death, eternal death, that, that is eternal separation from God. That's like the rich man and Lazarus. You know, it's going to be a fact that eternal damnation in the lake of fire will be that of knowing and being able to view God's eternal kingdom, but not have access to it. Like the rich man in Lazarus. You know, the rich man is in, there's in, 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 in <laughs> the rich man is in fire. And Lazarus is in the bosom of Abraham. And the, the rich man is calling out over the chasm that he can't cross. And, he, and the other can't cross over to him either. Just a little drop of water. That's eternal death. In 1 Corinthians, in the first chapter, Paul tells us something that Jesus Christ is the source of life. So if Jesus Christ is the source of life, beloved, why do we fear death? Why do I fear death? And I've thought about that. I've thought about, okay, what do I fear about death? I fear about how I'm going to die. That's all I, honestly, being transparent to you, that's what I fear. How, right? And there's an old song that, that says, you know, um, I want to go naturally. And I bet you Gary will tell me where that came from after church service. But I want to go naturally. But some people don't go naturally. Some people get sick. Some people get in a car accident. But here's what Paul says to us. In 1 Corinthians 1, verse 30 and 31. And because of him you are in Christ Jesus, who become to us wisdom from God, righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption. So that it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. It's because we are in Christ Jesus. He becomes to us. He became to us. Wisdom. Wisdom. <laughs> wisdom. Where from? The wisdom from God. He becomes to us righteousness. His righteousness has been imputed to us where God sees us as holy. That's why we're called holy ones. As Christians, we're holy ones. Sanctification. He became to us sanctification. That means that we are made holy for God. In the temple, they used to sanctify all of the, the instruments and all of the different um, things that were involved in temple worship made them holy unto God. Jesus became to us our sanctification, where we are made holy because of his blood. Righteousness means that we're acceptable to God. We are made holy. We are holy ones. We are set apart for him and him alone. And redemption. He became to us that which set us free. He set us free. And when we're set free, we are free indeed. Jesus Christ is the source of our life. When I go back to, to Luke, he says to us, watch yourselves lest your hearts be weighed down. Let your hearts be no longer weighed down with worry, with trepidation, 
with the idea that, oh, woe is me, what is going to happen? What's going to happen to our world? What's going to happen to our country? Is God judging? Is God going to judge America? No, God's not going to judge America because He's already judging America. God is already judging America, the United States. Because we are a nation that has turned its back on God. Period. Paragraph. It has. So, what do we do? We stop sulking, stop dragging our, our, our heads, but we are to stand up straight. Look up, for our redemption draws near. Our redemption is Christ coming on a cloud in glory. And everyone in the world who is not of the elect will be mourning because it will be too late. And for the United States, it's already too late. But you know what? It's not too late for the elect. That's why we still have to preach the gospel. That's why we still have to tell our neighbors about Jesus, that He is our Redeemer and our Savior. So we still have to. We still have to love our neighbors as ourselves. We still have to show the love of Christ to others. So, stand up. Look up. And be elated because your redemption draws near. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Let's sing that together. And ransom captive Israel that mourns in lowly exile there until the Son of God appear. Until the Son of God appear. O God, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus.
stand as we confess our faith in the, through the Apostles' Creed this morning. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated and prepare your hearts and minds as we pray together this morning. And as we pray, let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Let's pray together. <coughs> Heavenly Father, to you, O Lord, we lift up our souls, and in you we put our trust. Do not let us be ashamed of our hope, but come quickly. Sustain us by your Holy Spirit, that we may have joy at the advent of Christ our Savior. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. We praise you, O Lord of hosts. You have fulfilled your promise of salvation by sending Jesus to suffer your just wrath on the cross. That we might declare righteous, be declared righteous in your sight. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us now. And bless every pastor in their proclamation of your word. And preserve us in your grace. That your Son might always be our righteousness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, our King, righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne, and steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. Watch over the authorities of our land, and grant that they may govern justly, so that we may live in peace as we proclaim your love and faithfulness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks to you, O oh God, that as you establish our hearts blameless and holiness before you, so you also provide for all our needs in this body and life. Hear our earnest prayers for those who are in need of your mercy. Emily, who is going on a mission trip to Africa, all by herself, be with her guide and director, and send your holy angels to watch over her. Bethany, who has a tumor, God, I pray for your for your healing and wholeness to come into her body and dispel, dissolve this tumor. And for little Waylon, our grandson, who's 14 months old and has COVID, who's pretty sick, God, in your mercy, heal him in Jesus' name, help him to recover back to healing whole, health and wholeness. And any others that are out there that are sick and recovering, Father, I ask that you hear our prayer. Hear our earnest prayers for those who are in need of your mercy and comfort them. Comfort all who mourn at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. <coughs> comfort all who mourn until the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. And now, holy God, you declared that the days were coming when you would accomplish your salvation. And they are coming. And in your time, you caused your son, the righteous branch, to spring up for David. And by your grace, keep us joined as to Christ. Keep us joined to Christ, that we might bear fruit until the day that he returns in glory. For he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, and who taught us to pray. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
It's time to receive our morning offering. And please stand with me as we sing and give thanks. <coughs> Father, we give you thanks that when we are weak, we are strong, that when we are poor, we become rich because of your riches. God, we give you the glory for all that you've done for us in and through Christ Jesus. May God bless these gifts as we give them back for the mission of the gospel, for the mission of this church. In Jesus' name. shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance, his favor upon you, and give you his peace, that peace which passes all of your understanding. And you're going out, and you're coming in, and you're lying down, and you're rising up from this day forth and forevermore, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our last song is Grace, Love, and Fellowship, hymn number 233. May the grace of Christ our Savior and the love of God our Father and the fellowship of the Spirit be with us. and serve the Lord. God bless you and let's go downstairs for Bible study and fellowship. Bible study will be at 1115, okay? 1115. God bless you.